Okay, ladies and gentlemen, this next um, problem asks us to solve this equation, this quadratic equation, by a process called completing the square. Now, while we've reviewed this in class, one of the things I want to point out to you, I did send you a worksheet. Well, actually, it was a, it was a handout that I created that said how to solve a quadratic equation by completing the square, and I delineated the steps for you step by step. So make sure you've printed that handout out that I sent you the other day. And then we also went over this in class, but here's a good review. The step one. When you're completing the square, you want to get all your variables alone and your constants alone. So variables are on the left, constants are on the right. The next thing you want to do is make sure the leading coefficient is a 1, which it is. If this number were not a 1, let's pretend this were a 3, we would divide everything by 3. So variables are alone, leading coefficient is a 1. Now what you do next is you look at the term in front of the x. You look at the value of b, the middle term, the, coefi the middle coefficient. And what we do, let's go off to the side. Okay. We take half. We take half of 8. And we square it. Well, half of 8 is 4. And 4 squared is 16. So again, review what I did. Once the, once the x's were alone and the 1 was in front, we, took, we looked at 8. We took half of 8, which is 4. 4 squared is 16. I now take that 16 and I add it to both sides of the equation. Okay? What I do to one side, I do to the other. Now, this side should factor as a perfect square. And if you factor it, you definitely get x and x. You get a plus 4 and a plus 4. Of course, you know, to see that you get the 8 in the middle, 4x, 4x gives me 8x. And this is actually x plus 4 quantity squared. Now, one kind of cheating way you can always do this rather than going through any work, by completing the square, you've, always, you've made this a perfect square. So this is going to look like this, and the number that's going to go here is always the number that was inside here. Half of 8 was 4. If this was a negative, it would be a negative up here. So it's a nice way to do it. Negative 15 plus 16 is 1. So I now have, as we said it in class, blah blah squared equals a constant. So I'm going to apply the square root property. If blah blah squared equals a constant, then blah blah, which in this case would just be x plus 4, is equal to plus or minus, and then we take the square root of 1. To get x by itself, we have to move the 4 over, so we use the inverse operation of subtraction x equals negative 4 plus or minus the square root of 1. And now we always see if we can simplify the answer. Well, there's nothing to do to negative 4. There's nothing to do to plus or minus. But you know that the square root of 1 is just 1. So you no longer need that radical. So we basically have two answers here. We basically have a negative 4 plus 1 or we have a negative 4 minus 1. You read this through first as a plus and then as a minus. Negative 4 plus 1 would be negative 3. And negative 4 minus 1 would be a negative 5. So our two answers to this problem, our solutions are negative 3 and negative 5. And we accomplish this by using the process that we were told to, complete the square. Again, practice makes perfect on this method. And I'm going to do one more video for you on completing the square to help you see a little bit more.